morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about Earth systems. Topic for the day is going to be mining, so as always, let me get you some objectives, and we'll get going. By the end of this video, three things that I need you to know or be able to do. First one is to describe the major types of mining. Second, discuss the human and environmental impacts of mining. And finally, understand legislation related to mining. So obviously today we are talking about mining. And as we talk about mining, there are some important vocabulary words that I need you to be aware of. The first one is crustal abundance. Crustal abundance is just how much of a particular min mineral, sorry, how much of a particular mineral is available in the crust of the earth. So some things like gold have got a very low crustal abundance, some things like oxygen have got a very high crustal abundance. Then you've got ore. Ore is any mineral that contains a precious metal or something that miners are looking for. So if you think about a bunch of rocks within those rocks that are contained a precious metal, could be gold, it could be iron, could be aluminum, whatever. Those rocks and the surrounding materials and minerals that contain the thing that you are after, that is known as ore. A deposit is a concentration of a mineral that you know miners are seeking. So it could be a gold deposit, it could be a coal deposit, it could be a potassium deposit, whatever the material it is. When it's concentrated in one area, that is known as a deposit. And one particular type of ore that I want you to know of is bauxite. Bauxite is the ore that contains aluminum. So just jot down bauxite, aluminum. A reserve is the amount of mineral that is available and can be attained ec economically. So if mining companies are able to get at this material um, at a cost that will allow them to make a profit, then it is included in the reserve. And reserves are usually talked about in how many years that material will last. And last vocabulary word you need to know is mining spoils or tailings. This is whatever is left over after the mining process is done. Obviously in mining you're doing a lot of digging and blasting and exploding and things like that. So after you recover the metals that you want, everything that's left over is known as the spoils or the tailings. Now the reason that we need to do mining in the first place is, as we talked about in a previous video, um, mineral resources are not distributed evenly throughout the earth. When the earth cooled, things kind of shifted to different places. They sank farther down in the earth or rose towards the surface, and as the earth solidified, they got stuck in those places. So in order to get at the minerals and resources that humans have come to find necessary for our lives, we often have to go digging in the earth to get to them. So that's why we do mining in the first place. Now. The next part of this video is going to be all about different types of mining. And I want to give you a quick just overview of each one. I'm going to go through them in detail, but you might want to come back to this diagram later on to kind of get a visual. Um, here are the types you need to know about. You've got mountaintop removal, which is exactly what it sounds like. That's where you take off the top of a mountain in order to get whatever you're after. Open pit, you dig a pit straight down into the ground. These aren't hard to remember because their names make sense. You've got strip mining where you dig strips in the ground to get whatever you're after. You've got placer mining. Placer mining uses running water to separate lighter materials from heavier materials. And then the last one is subsurface mining, and this is where you actually dig down into the surface of the earth. So like I said, I'm going to go through each of these individually, but throughout the video, you might want to come back and reference this diagram. So first type of mining that you need to know about is strip mining. Some qualities of strip mining you need to know about. This is carried out when the material that you're after is close to the surface and it runs horizontal with the surface. So it doesn't really go down deep vertically, it runs horizontally. Um, the way that this practice works is essentially, let's say you were looking from above, they would dig a strip of land out and then next to it they would dig another strip of land and start pulling out whatever they're after. So let's say they were digging for coal as they dug along here going horizontally. They would dig up this material and then they would dump it into this hole over here. And then once they're done digging that up, they've got another hole. So they'll dig right here and dump the material over into this one. Um, two materials that are searched for using strip mining are coal and sand. And strip mining, obviously, it's very rough on the earth, totally gets rid of habitat. But in a lot of cases, strip mining can be reclaimed, which means that land can be made usable again. Next one to know about is going to be open pit mining. And this is where your resource runs horizontal to the surface of the earth, but it also goes down vertically. And open pit mining is just what it sounds like. You dig a big pit straight down into the ground. Um, 
and basically you'll just keep digging down until you run out of uh, whatever mineral you're after. The biggest one that you need to know about or associate with open pit mining is copper. Then you've got mountaintop removal, which is probably the most destructive of all of these surface mining types. And this is where you literally remove the top of the mountain using heavy machinery and explosives. Um, there's a lot of equipment involved in this. The tailings or the spoils from mountaintop removal often get dumped over into valleys, which is you know not necessarily good because rivers run through valleys. So if you dump all your tailings into a valley, you can block up a river. Um, one of the big minerals or resources is searched for using mountaintop removal is coal. And then you've got placer mining. Now, when you think of placer mining, I want you to think of old school gold miners with their pans, like sloshing them around in the river. Um, basically, in placer mining, you are searching through river sediments. You are using the running water to separate lighter materials from heavier materials. Three uh, minerals or resources you need to know about and associate with placer mining would be diamonds, tantalum, and gold. Now, you can get all of those through other types of mining, but they are most associated with placer mining. Final one you need to know is subsurface mining. Carry out subsurface mining when your resource is more than 100 meters, 330 feet below the surface of the earth. Um, coal, diamonds, gold, all search for using subsurface mining. And this is like classic mining. When people think of mining, this is usually what they think of. You dig a shaft usually horizontally first, and then you dig down from the surface and you come down vertically, and then you build basically a series of tunnels and shafts that you can roll equipment through, run elevators through, take workers through all that good stuff. Now, with mining, obviously there's going to be environmental damage. Some of the major environmental damages associated with mining you need to know is if you're going to go mining, obviously you've got to get people and equipment there. So that means that you're going to build roads. And in building roads, you fragment habitats and you uh, speed up the erosion process because you're taking away vegetation, running machinery over it. If you are going to be dumping sediments or tailings into a valley area, as they do with mountaintop removal, then you can often divert or change or stop the flow of a river, which is going to damage the habitat and the ecosystem in that area. In some cases, um, especially in the hunt for gold in placer mining, mercury can be used. Mercury is a highly volatile neurotoxin, um, and it moves easily between air, water, and soil. So, excuse me, if a uh, miner is looking for gold, Often mercury will be used in that process, which is highly toxic. And the last one, this is the one you'll probably hear the most about or get asked about the most, is acid mine drainage. Um, especially when you are doing subsurface mining, water can flow into those mines and try to flood them, which means that you are always having to pump water out. Now, the water you're pumping out has run through rock. It has leached out a bunch of ions and acids. It's reacted with the rocks. So this water you pump out usually has a very low pH. And as you pump it out, that makes whatever soil that lands on very acidic. Or if it runs into a river or a stream or a lake, that becomes very problematic. So acid mine drainage is a big deal with regard to mining. And then obviously, if you're a miner, your life is rough. Um, between 1900 and the year 2000, roughly 11,000 miners died in America alone. Um, since then, some pretty strict uh, safety regulations have been in place. And in America, mining deaths aren't all that common. However, in China, where regulation isn't nearly as strict, mining accidents are very, very common. Um, some of the things that can occur or happen to a miner is obviously you can have a cave-in, you can have explosions, um, lung damage from uh, breathing dirty particulate filled air all day. You can have fires down there and then there's often poisonous gases associated with the mining process. So the life of a miner is a hard life and it is a dangerous life. And to wrap up, I'm going to finish up with the future and then some legislation. So future, unfortunately, we have already extracted all of this stuff that is really easy to get at. So now going forward, the minerals that we're after are going to take more work to get at, which means more machinery, more environmental damage, um, more danger for miners probably, and more cost. So going forward, one of the problems that we're going to have is how do we get to the minerals that we need to sustain the life that we've come to enjoy without completely wrecking the environment, even though the stuff that is left to get is harder to extract. Two pieces of legislation you need to be aware of. First one is the General Mining Act. Now, the General Mining Act was put down in the 1800s, and it was basically a means of encouraging development. A couple of things that it said is it allowed for mining on federal land. This includes oil drilling and coal extraction. So on those federal lands, people were able to extract mineral resources. 
Um, this, like I said, was put into place to encourage land development and to encourage people to move from the East Coast towards the West. Now, unfortunately, this act had very little environmental protection, and a lot of mining law that we have now is still based on this general act that was put out there that did not have so much environmental regulation. And then the last one you need to know is the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act. Now, sorry, I left the field there. I forgot to change the picture out, but here's what you need to know about it. Um, it deals with coal mining, and it deals with these surface effects of coal mining, whether it is strip mining, uh, mountaintop removal, or things that are damaged when you do subsurface coal mining. It mandates that any environmental damage that is done to the surface of the earth be reclaimed. That means that it is repaired in as much as possible or as much as it can be. So that's it. That was a really fast-talking, quick crash course through mining. Make sure that you know the types, uh, the environmental damage, and the legislation. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.